Well known for his role as Sergeant Davis Quinton on six seasons of the international Emmy-nominated comedy series Corner Gas, Lauren Cardinal has acquired close to 100 professional film and TV credits such as Unintentional Mother, God's Acre, Tin Star, FX's Fargo, along with featured films such as The Humanity Bureau and Never Steady, Never Still. Throughout his career, Lauren has received numerous nominations and distinguished awards for his body of work and is the recipient of an honorary PhD from Thompson Rivers University. Lauren's varied skills set also includes writing, directing for TV, as well as producing the documentary Chasing Lear. And as a sought-after voice actor, Mr. Cardinal has starred in an award-winning animated series most recently as Sheriff Gordy in Sony's open season, Scared Silly, and he has reprised his beloved role of Davis in the third season of the hit comedy Corner Gas, the animated series, and as well as Grandpa Nat in the animated series Molly of Denali, which has won a Peabody Award. Lauren, thank you so much for being on Our Native Land. My pleasure, Chad. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you, too. And uh, for the listeners out there, we uh, met quite a few years back. Uh, you were in a play in Nanaimo, I think it was back in 2012, called Copper Thunderbird. That's and, right. Written by Marie Clement. And, yes. Uh, we both played the uh, venerated and incredibly talented uh, artist Norval Morisot. Yes, absolutely. And and you actually, you hopped into the production quite late actually i think we're about two weeks from being on the stage and you very quickly and professionally learned all the lines like if you were in a corvette and you're trying to get to the finish line i don't know if you remember what that experience was like oh yeah i remember very this is the first time i've ever, ever done anything like that and uh the challenge was very uh it was one of the appealing things and and doing marie's work as well i'm a big fan of marie clements and uh and getting a chance to play that role was uh, was awesome. Yeah, and, uh, her writing is just brilliant. So yeah, well, I think was, uh, I think you fit the part. Challenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it worked out, and I know you you did a great job, and I had a lot of a lot of fun uh, working on that play with you. But uh, I'm gonna get into some questions here, uh, Lauren. I want to go right back to the beginning. You were the first Indigenous student ever to register and complete an acting degree at the University of Alberta back in 1993. So I just want to know, what was your original inspiration to become an actor? You know, what motivated you to seek that education? And do you think that education has been vital to the success you've had in the film and television television industry? Yeah, firstly, I would say, uh, yeah, the uh, the BFA program at the U of A was to is uh, an, an incredible resource to have under my belt. I call it my toolbox. It was one of those uh, one of those choices I made, knowing that what I lacked as an actor was technique and, and understanding the craft of acting. It's like, it's, uh, and going to the U of A offered that those skills, like it's, it's akin to a carpenter getting all his tools and learning from a master carpenter. So that's what I put myself under was a, uh, knowing it was a three year, four year program. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, and I went in there going, I know I needed this training. Yeah. I needed to learn how to use my voice and my whole body, my mm -hmm. brains, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to understand how to, how to be a better actor. And also the skills give me longevity in this career. If, uh, you know, because it, it offers me a chance to do, uh, more, um, uh, directing, writing, producing, acting for voice and camera it gives me, I have, I have a base of technique that I rely on when I go into a production. Yeah. That's where I go to my, all, all the skills I learned. I start at the basic bottom, which is understanding how to learn, how to read a script. Yeah. Not just words, but understanding what, where, when, why each character functions and how it functions and my role and, and how my character fits into the whole story and what I can do to make that story come alive. And you, and you learn that by by learning technique te technique of acting, and yeah. you have to have those tools to understand how to how to bring the play lift it up. You know, you always the play is up is I always think of it as the play is up to, up here yeah. above us. Yeah, and we have to bring ourselves up to the play. We can't bring the play down to us. And yeah, some really good writers like Marie wow. offer that challenge, and uh, and the and uh, I knew the. I, I I bumped into acting when I was 23. I didn't. I was never had a an aspiration to be an actor like okay. most people. Oh, I knew when I was three. It was like no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, 
when I was, you know, when I was little, I was, because my dad was a survivor of uh, residential school and same with my mom. Mm -hmm. um, we were just worried about getting dinner. Yeah. You know, that was, uh, that was our goal. <laughs> Let's so, eat this today, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. And what, what, what were you doing at 23 or like between 20 and 23, like just before that moment? Like what, what was your life like? Like, what, did you have a job or it was like, you? Oh, were I, like yeah, I started working when I was 14. So I, I've been working all through school, all through junior high and mm -hmm. high school. I always had a job and, you know, go there on the weekends and after school and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and before that I was a, uh, photographer at, uh, I learned, uh, I had a summer job at the uh, Native Communication Society of Alberta, okay. which was a native newspaper. It had a radio wing as well. And uh, it was working on a TV broadcasting wing to bring news to all the native communities in, in Northern Alberta. Okay. And uh, I lucked into the job as a, a summer student. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, then, uh, and then they were offering an internship for the summer. And uh, I, I, uh, they held the job for me, Laurent yeah. Roy, my uh, editor, yeah finally tracked me down he says you coming in to apply or what because we're <laughs> kind of waiting and we're like, oh oh okay i better go do this thing do and then something there about it. yeah so i showed up on the job going okay i, I don't know and it was a newspaper and i was like i'd never done anything like that before and yeah they took me under their wing they taught me how to be a darkroom technician how to develop film how to make a print of a picture and then they taught me how to be a photographer, how to use a camera, how to frame, how to make a nice picture, how to make a good picture. Yeah. And and then I just kind of went from there and 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 I loved it. It yeah. was one of the things I, I realized is that I'm not a nine to fiver. <laughs> I love the paper job because everything was different. Every week there was a different story, a different angle going on. There's uh, you know, the constitutional talks that were going on in Ottawa at the yeah. time and you know, so there was a lot of news being generated. So we were, it was a buzzing time. Everybody was buzzing around, you know, so it was a good, good time. And, and then, uh, yeah, before then, then I was a rugby player as well. I was uh, on the side. On, I saw know, that on your website. Week, actually, yeah. 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 I started playing with the Strathcona Druids in Edmonton and, uh, I fell in love with the game when I was in high school. I even went back for an extra semester just to play rugby. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome! Yeah. I think that's something that most people don't know about you, but uh, that's really cool that uh, you 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 find different passions besides you know what your career path and it looks like you exactly. continue to play and rugby too. And everything I've, I've done, like my photography and rugby career, everything those skills and those lessons I learned from from those activities, I bring into my directing and acting as well. Yeah. Uh, framing up a picture is the same when you're directing a play you're moving actors around to tell a story make a picture yeah and, and that's and then I so I use those skills I go ah there's too many people on one side let's move somebody over here and we'll give them a reason why to balance out the stage and make sure that you know it helps tell the story interesting yeah I never thought of it that way but I now that you've you put it in that way it makes complete sense yeah, for a director of mine, uh, I worked with uh, Uta Birnbaum. She she worked with Bertolt Brecht, famous German writer, and she was his assistant director And when she was younger. And she came to university in my second year and directed us in a play. Mm -hmm. So I just sat right next to her and I watched her work with my class and stuff, moving us around. And, yeah. and, and then I, you know, asked her a question, why, why, why is that guy over there? And she goes, because it tells a story. Yeah. Said a, a, a person... Uh, a, a, a deaf person should be able to come in, sit down, see the stage, and tell what what story is happening. Oh, okay, interesting. Kind of went, oh, okay. So yeah, so I always keep that in the back of my mind. So, yes. What story? What story does this tell right now? Where the actors are? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I want to talk a bit uh, about yourself again. Obviously, as an Indigenous actor uh, in the mainstream media, in my personal opinion, I think you've been exceptionally successful at making sure you don't fall into a specific category of character. So although you're well known for being the hilarious cop on Corner Gas, uh, you've played a bunch of other roles that seem to be fairly different from the next. Uh, how important is it to you that you portray these, these different characters in, and how does that affect your career? Well, it, it is a choice. It's choices that you make. And, and uh, I don't like to be just stereotyped into one genre. Mm -hmm. I can do, you know, Shakespeare. I can do, uh, you know, the bad guy. And that's what I look for. I look for something to change. When I was doing Corner Gas, after every season, I would have a, a couple of theater jobs booked 
afterwards and the characters would be totally different from Davis. And mm -hmm. that's one of those things that I look for is, is to flex my acting muscles, like, like playing Norval was another challenge. Yeah. And, and that's what I like to do. And, and sometimes it's, it's difficult for the audience to, especially if they don't know the, uh, my background of work that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can feel it when I'm on stage. I know that I have to give them a couple of minutes to get used to them not seeing Davis up there, not expecting me to go, all right. Yeah, yeah. they're just like they're, <laughs> they're expecting you to be funny when what you're yeah. actually doing is not funny at yeah. all, you know? Yeah. yeah, so it takes a minute minute to shift, but once they make that shift and realize that, okay, they have to lose that and focus on what I'm, who I am and what I'm doing on stage, then they come along for the ride, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I did uh, Sam Shepard's True West, and uh, I remember in, in one of the scenes, my character gets really mad, and he stands there, and he just, and then I just kicked this chair, this kitchen chair, and I booted it, yeah. and it did a flip. And okay. landed again on its four legs. No way. And um, yeah, it was just one of those lucky gifts from the gods, right? Yeah. So uh, I just kind of, I just kind of looked at it, and then I just kind of looked out to the audience and just kind of went and carried on, right? Yeah. But when, but uh, one of the guys from the audience was a friend of the guy I was working with, and he came and he said, "You know, you know what? You traumatized me." I go, "What do you mean?" He says, "When you kicked that chair." It just reminded me of my dad and stuff. And I just shrank back in my chair and I was scared. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I went, sorry about that. But yeah. it is <laughs> acting. You. Don't worry. It's fake. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. You know, everyone's got a trigger and it's like, oh, okay. Sorry about that, buddy. But well, speaking about some of the roles that you've done, one of the more recent reoccurring roles that you've acquired is playing Nelson Sky on the CBS hit TV series F FBI Most Wanted. Can you tell me a bit about the newer role and what it's been like? You know, what's attracted you to that character specifically? Well, that one, uh, it actually came to me. They actually tracked, uh, they saw something on somewhere. They saw my demo reel and they were aware of my uh, body of work I've done. And okay. um, the, the role uh, uh, initially had like one line in the scene or two lines in the scene. Mm -hmm. And the uh, casting director didn't want me to audition because he didn't want to insult me by auditioning for two lines. So yeah. they just phoned my agent and said, is he interested in coming to work on this new Dick Wolf series? Yeah. <laughs> and I went, hmm, let me think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy who created Law and Order and all these other shows, Chicago PD, Chicago Man. Yeah, yeah I'm available. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, yeah. So I did the first season and we did one, I did the one episode that they had written. And then I went, well, that was fun. At least I got a Dick Wolf production under my belt. And, yeah. uh, and then they started bringing me back. I think I was in seven episodes in the first season. And oh, wow. We, did, we did 13 before COVID shut us down, mm -hmm. shut us down early. Mm -hmm. So they kept bringing me back and adding, adding stuff. And it was, uh, it's uh, an awesome team to work for. I mean, I've been back once since COVID and, uh, the protocols are quite uh, strict, which mm -hmm. is awesome to see. Yeah. And they actually have an onset COVID police guy roaming around, making sure the crew and cast are, are following the rules. Oh, and, wow. That's perfect. So it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And my hands get all dry and shrivelly because I wash them so much and, you know, yeah. um, do the, uh, <laughs> the gels. And it's like, oh, I get these prunes on the yeah. end of my arms. I, I want to make the bad joke that the COVID cop is just Tom Cruise walking around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? <laughs> it's probably, I, think, <laughs> I think he went a, a bit too far, but I totally understand his frustration because there are people who aren't taking this serious. They think it's just, they're, they're buying into the thing of, you know, oh, it's just fake. And it's like, no, science, follow science. Yeah. Don't follow politicians. Listen mm -hmm. to the doctors. So they know what they're talking about. Mask the hell up. <laughs> when you're going out in public, put your mask on. It's you know, easy. It's, no, it's not difficult. No one's asking you to roll a rock up the hill before you do that. You know, <laughs> it's just easy. It's a little mask. It goes over your ears. Yeah. Done. Yeah. You know, and you're saving other people. If not for yourself, save other people. Yeah. Because germs even attach to ignorant people. So mask up <laughs> save lives you know oh this is educational i was unaware of that no i'm kidding but yeah no it's it's important and i appreciate you appreciate you bringing that point yeah. forward um i personally find you as an amazing role model as a young indigenous man in the beginnings of a, a new career in uh broadcasting so you know to those of you to those who are listening and inspired just as much as i am you know what words of advice can you give to a young individual who wants to pursue uh, you know a career in media film or television well i would i would uh um say to anybody who f just find your passion 
find what you're very passionate about and uh, the that you love doing no matter what it, what area it, it's in and if you love the food industry go get some training learn from masters learn ask questions be curious mm -hmm. don't get cynical because this is a tough business especially in the film and tv business mm -hmm. and it's easy to to take you have to learn how to take rejection you have oh. to learn how not, not to turn it on yourself mm -hmm. because um it's it's once you do that then then it's hard because then you get this negative attitude Un and when you go to audition right? for people yeah it's unhealthy and then when you go to audition for people they can see it they can sense it when someone's bitter and angry and then they decide do I want to work with this person for the next six weeks? Yeah. You know, so your attitude is, is, a, is a major seller on, on what you do. So you have to come in, just open up and offer and say, here, here's what I do. Here's what I am. Here's a little bit of what I can do. And, mm -hmm. and, and thank you for your time. And, yeah. but uh, being passionate about what you do and get training in whatever field you're in, get the best training you can find. That was the advice I was given and I followed it and it's worked for me. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, yeah. now we, we talked a little bit about COVID. Obviously, dur during these COVID times, it's been noted that uh, you and your wife, uh, Monique, have been working on a production company called Through and Through. Uh, I don't know how much you can tell me about it, but uh, it looks like there's some projects on the go. And I just want I was just curious what, what it's all about. Yeah, no, we, we started our own film company, Through and Through Productions, Through and Through Films. And uh, and we're in the midst of trying to develop a, a new series. And, and it takes everything takes time when yep. you're trying to get a film done. So we have a slate of projects that we're looking at, and we're slowly inching forward. The uh, most important thing when you're starting a, a film company is, is setting up the bones, mm -hmm. setting up the structures, because you have to have that. You can't just jump into a project. And there's so many different moving parts that you need in place before you before you even start yeah so it's a long it's a long business it's a long process but yeah. we're we're plugging along moving forward and uh you know uh hopefully when soon when, once everything gets and once everyone gets vaccinations and we get somewhat back to normal yeah. that we're able to to move forward start our uh start production on one of our projects that we have lined up so. nice and it must be nice to to work uh with with your wife on something as well too i i can imagine yeah and she's a she's she's a genius she was one of these uh um she was the main reason why uh chasing lear got finished without her uh doing all the uh, uh post-production pre-production all that kind of Mm -hmm. work she jumped in i just kind of forced her to do it <laughs> <laughs> i said hey and uh, she, she uh, yeah, jumped in and then it was a, a long process of finishing it and uh, getting all the paperwork and, and uh, permits and like, you get a permit to, to show on a network. You have so much paperwork to get through to imagine. get that little bit of little bit of Sony ass, a little bit of cash. Yeah. And uh, and uh, yeah, she she jumped in there and she did it and she brought the film to uh, to be aired and seen around the world. So we're still working on, on finding a distributor so we can put it in schools because yeah. it's a brilliant story of uh, August Schellenberg. Okay. Which, nice. uh, which uh, he was a, a great man and um, I was lucky to know him. And I also just received the August Schellenberg Award this year from the Imaginative Film Festival. Okay. The, the August Schellenberg Award of Excellence. And, they, uh, and this is the sixth year of them handing it out. And uh, I was lucky to receive it this year. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, it's a, it's been a year of of getting some 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 recognition, and it's you know it's hard to take it all. And they have theater network in Edmonton. They're building a new theater because mm -hmm. their old one burnt down. Oh, it was no. a landmark in uh, Edmonton. Uh, it was sad to see it go. We did a lot of great plays, a lot of shows in that theater, but they're building a new one with two theaters in it. Oh, wow. And uh, there is a black box space which they're going to name the Lauren Cardinal Black Box. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, wow. so I'm quite honored and touched by that. So uh, we're looking at an opening in November of 2021. Wow, this year. <laughs> it's weird saying that 2021. 2021. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like I'm George Jetson or something. <laughs> well, you'll be flying on your skateboard the when, when you yeah, that's open it. I get the my theater, jet pack right? and I head over to Edmonton. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking about the future, there's uh, one more thing I want to ask you before I let you go. Is where do you see yourself ten years from now? You know what what does the the future hold for Lauren? What what are you hoping for? 
Well, I'm hoping uh, by that point of we will have a couple of shows and films under our belt and we'll be looking at new material to keep moving. I'm a lifer in this business, so I'll still be doing theater. I'm, I'm working uh, on getting to Stratford this year as well, the Stratford Shakespeare Festival in okay. Ontario. Wow. So I'm working on uh, uh, hopefully scheduling will uh, will allow me to go and, and play with those guys because it's, it's on my bucket list. So oh, okay. I work at Stratford. Yeah, nice. Because that's where I got my training. And, and even when I was at the U of A, I would said, I'm going to go. I want to go work at Stratford because there wasn't enough, you know, native representation on stage. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go crack that open. And, and a lot more uh, have been there since. So, you know, it's being taken care of but you know i want them to play lead roles i want us to play you know the uh iago and othello i want you to play you know richard the third i want to do those things and, and and it should just be normal yeah it shouldn't be a special thing it, just, it, it should be normal it should be notable it should just be just a fluid yeah it's not thing. a we're not a curiosity oh look at the indian <laughs> play shakespeare oh you know yeah and put in the back space or the backstage space or the alley space you know yeah. put us on the main stage where we belong that's awesome well, Lauren, I want to thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy man, but I appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk to me. And you're an inspiration for, for, for myself and I'm sure for a lot of people. So thank you so much again for being on Our Native Land. And I wish you the best of luck.